Okay, guys, so really quick, I just wanted to start this video. Now, I didn't get a chance to record it while I was doing it, so I'm kind of going back, uh, opening up the program that you have for the diagnostic link. And I want to show you really quick what the code was about. Now, just to give you some perspective or some an idea of what's going on, the truck came in for a few things. Number one, soot level high, which we've already seen that before. That typically means you got to do a regen but something may be preventing it from doing the regen or completing a regen successfully, which means now the truck itself is gonna be at DPF zone four or zone five. Okay, something like that, you'll get stop engine lights, check engine lights. It'll, it's pretty much gonna light up the cluster. So just to give you, again, perspective as to what's going on. However, don't just look at the top code and think, hey, I gotta do a regen. Look at the other codes down at the bottom. So for example, with this one here, DOC outlet temp, High DOC outlet temp signal spike, DOC outlet temp very high. And what you're looking at is that code right there, okay, which is going to be fault code 3250. And then you have FMI 0, FMI 8, FMI 15. So what ended up happening with this particular one is we were doing a regen and the DOC outlet temperature sensor, okay, was going very, very high. And that happens for a few reasons, for a few things. Uh, let me just give you again, there's your DOC inlet, DOC outlet, and DPF. So the outlet, okay, DOC outlet temp sensor, what was happening during the region, this was spiking so high that it actually would shut down the region and it would not do a region. It's a protection feature, again, so that the filter or the one box essentially doesn't melt internally and create a lot more problems. So the idea is to protect it as best as possible, okay? So we noticed that as we're doing the region, I'm gonna show you as many pictures as I can. I didn't do video during that process. The DOC inlet pressure was spiking everywhere. So it was going at one, 1 1.6, it jumped to 1. You know, 1.5, then two, and then it was just basically going back and forth. That tells me that we had an issue with a uh, DOC face plug. Now, I tried to do the face plug regen or process. Now, it's not gonna really show it to you here, I don't think after treatment, yeah, see, it's not gonna be there because I'm not actually connected live to the truck, but typically that's where you would go. After treatment, then the drop-down menu comes down and you will see DOC face plug routine. I tried that, that did not work, which is why we actually ended up dropping the entire filter, having the one box serviced, cleaned out, and we make the, DP the DPFs there as well. So again, hopefully this helps you guys out when you're looking at some codes. Again, look at the code that's active, and then go down to the bottom where you're gonna see here, DOC high, signal spike, very high. Those are things that are gonna indicate, hey, guess what? I've got a bigger problem than just doing a regen. So do a regen and then always look at the number. So I hope this helps you guys out. I'm gonna continue on with the video. Let me know if, as always if you have any questions. Okay guys, so as you can see, the DOC inlet pressure is at 0 0.7. And then during the regen process, it goes to 1.6 it'll drop down to 1.1 or 1.5 or whatever the number is. The idea behind the pressure, it's supposed to start off low and then slowly go to about 0 0.8, maybe 0 0.9. That's good. If it's going up and down, back and forth, that means you have a face plug situation. What's going on, everybody? Good morning. So today we are waiting and waiting and waiting, waiting on parts, waiting on authorizations. Uh, it's just a waiting game. So right now I'm working on this truck, AB trucking. Abraham, Greg, really good customer, brings us his business, and I appreciate that very much. So right now, what we're going to do is we have a problem with the truck. Let me show you what we're doing. Let me show you what's going on and explaining. Right now, we have a DOC outlet temp sensor high. So what we did is we removed the one box. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering why you're removing the one box. Well, when we try to do a regen, the problem we had is the temperatures were spiking because the DOC or the one box, the DOC on the one box, the inlet side was actually getting plugged. Okay. And the reason for that, there's a few things. Number one, the manual is going to tell, the manual is going to tell you, Hey, check your overhead. Number one, it's got a little bit over 500,000. I think it's right about 600. I'll double check that in a second. So overhead, number one, second thing is going to be your software update. So the easiest thing that I can do while I'm waiting is a valve adjustment. So we're going to do a valve adjustment. I know you guys hear me mention that a lot. Um, I feel it makes a difference, especially if it makes your engine run a lot smoother, your valves are opening and closing correctly. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take all this out. We're going to just double check the valve adjustment, make sure that everything is within spec. 
as far as the lash goes on your intake and your exhaust. If that's good, fantastic. We should be getting the one box, the one box back tomorrow. If we get it back tomorrow, we can all put it together, do a regen, and we'll be ready to go. So hopefully that works out. So for now, let's take this thing apart. Let's get our tools out and let's go ahead and run the overcoat. All right, guys. So we have our one box back from the filter shop. They went ahead and cleaned it all out. As you can see, the DLC is nice and clean. Everybody say hi to Chavo. Chavo, saludos to YouTube. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, as you can see, there we go. One box. Now I try to do, number one, I try to do a regen. That was not successful because of the temperatures and the, and the pressure. Number two, not successful. Successful because of the amount of soot and ash that was actually blocking the DOC inlet, okay? So if you guys don't know, this is what comes from your motor directly into the one box. The DOCs are right back here, okay? Those were completely plugged up. And even with the attempt at the four hour region, five hour region, we were not successful. So took care of that. We're gonna put everything together right now. Tony's doing the clean and prep work. We got our DPF filters cleaned up. We've got new clamps. We've got new exhaust clamp kits. We've got new gaskets for the inlet and for the outlet of the one box. So we're gonna put it all back together. We're gonna input the serial numbers. Don't forget, you gotta do that. Each DPF has its own serial number, so you wanna input that, both of them, into the computer or the MCM using your software. Once we get that all put together, we're gonna to put this all back here. We're gonna hopefully get a nice, clean, successful region, which I'm pretty sure we will, but again, Fingers crossed, that's just kind of the way uh, the way it is because you still have to test everything and make sure it works before you can turn it into the customer. So I'll keep you guys posted. Like I said, we're cleaning it up, put it all back together and we'll go from there. All right, guys, you can tell first filter is in. Make sure you position these clamps correctly so they don't butt up against the other clamp that's gonna come in. Same thing goes for this one. You don't want it to go too low or too high because you want it to clear the heat shield that's gonna go right above it, okay? So again, give yourself enough room at the top and definitely enough room here so the next clamp, when it comes in, they don't butt up against each other. Make sure you torque it down properly because uh, if you don't, you're gonna have some exhaust leaking out of here or here and that will definitely affect your region. So we're gonna get this other filter in here, put it all back together and we should be ready to right, go. Guys, so we have the filter all put together. She's looking good. We're putting it all in installed lighting all the bolts, getting everything going. So just to give, give you a small picture of how we do it, use a transmission jack, get everything hooked up, everything linked up and tighten it down at the end. Don't forget, of course, you're gonna have to connect your harness, okay? Harness is right here. Everything else is pretty much ready to go. You have your doser diesel. Once you connect everything, you're gonna input your serial numbers into the MCM. So down there, if you can see, that crazy guy over there, that's my dad. Charlie Brown. Ah. Saludos. Hey, Mira. Hi, everybody. No te ven la cara. Saludos. There you are. <laughs> All right, guys, so you can see that's my dad. 70, over 75 years old and still working every day. So anyway, keep you guys posted once we get it all done. All right, guys, so now that we have our one box assembled, installed, connected, Next thing you want to do is connect to your truck using your software, your diagnostic. You want to reset your ash accumulator. See, DPF, there we go, hold on. There we go, DPF ash accumulator. You do that by launching your software. You're going to input the two serial numbers and hit set ash volume. Once you do that, it will do what it does. It takes a few seconds, maybe a minute or two. It'll say successful, click on close and you are all done. Now, however, it still doesn't fix the problem that you're facing, which is your regen. It still thinks you're in zone four, zone five, or whatever it was when you removed everything. Uh, let's see here. We're still gonna have some bolt codes. Let's see what those bad boys are pertaining to our truck. Yeah, see, soot level high. It's still gonna have some other codes, and that's again because we had everything disconnected and we actually ran the truck while well, we moved it, I should say, not ran the truck, but we moved it while we we're waiting for everything to come back. So everything is pretty much done, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna clear all the codes 
and the only ones that are going to stay would be your soot level high and let's see what else wants to stick around uh, da, da, da. come on I know it's not done come on there we go soot level high fault code 3719 FMI 16 so once we're done all set ready to go we will start a parked regen by going over to where it says service routines dpf once you start the engine you will give me one second let me get this crap out of the way you will then go to park regen this will change to start once the truck once the truck is on it will change to start and that's pretty much it you're going to maintain visual on your doc inlet pressure your throttle valve your temperatures okay and then set your timer and it should take about 40 minutes roughly to do a regen if it's successful so again once i get everyone out of the way we will get everything started and we'll go okay guys there. temperature is up to above 150 degrees these lights will still be here the check engine light the hey do a regen light it is now 2 226 in the afternoon i'll put the laptop on the ground because it's going to keep bobbing everywhere and what i want to do right now just kind of for shits and giggles i want to try and figure out if i have possibly a bad injector now i did do a valve adjustment that was off and i was wrong about the mileage it's actually 648 i thought it was just over 500 anyway that is done i'm not going to worry about that right now it's almost 2 30 just to give you a reference point because i want to do a regen and i want to know how long it's going to take so you can either do a quick little stopwatch using your phone so you can get an idea how long the regen will take. You know, make sure it's within, let's say within specs, if you will, 30 to 40, maybe 45 minutes at the most. Uh, really quick, what I want to do is an idle speed balance test, and this will kind of give us the numbers. Now, I haven't done it yet, but this is what the computer has stored, okay? I'm gonna run the test, click on yes, I showed you this before in a previous video. It does a quick countdown and then it does another countdown after that. So I'm not gonna do the video recording this whole thing. I'm just gonna kinda edit this and make it shorter and more palatable for you to watch. Because again, this is not uh, not exciting, but I wanna make it quick and to the point. So, okay, here we go. So it's resetting everything. It's gonna do the test for 90 seconds, a minute and 30 counting down. So I will come back and I will show you the results. Okay, guys, and here we go. The test actually passed. Now, these are the numbers. Now, you're going to be wondering what the hell the numbers mean. Uh, idle speed balance test. So whatever is closest to zero is best. Anything that goes away from it could mean potentially that an injector is bad or going out. Now, they will all compensate for each other so they can balance out to zero from what I understand. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. So 27, 21. These are actually two numbers that I'm not too happy with. Again, once you get closer to the 27s, almost the 30, then you possibly have an injector that's not working properly. Now it still may function, but it still may not function the way it should. Okay, and, and it will not always trigger a fault code. So we have negative 15, 12, zero, three, blah, blah, blah. So if you add all that shit up, negatives and positives, it should get you as close to zero as possible. However, we're not here for that. Uh, again, number two and number one possibly could have bad injectors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a parked regen, click on start, click on yes. I'm gonna start my timer. Right now, just to give you an idea, it is two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm sorry, it's two o'clock. Jesus Christ, I'm all, I'm all over the place. It's 2.30. So right now we're gonna start doing a regen. Throttle valve is good, pressure is good but obviously we just started so i'm going to start the timer i will keep you guys posted on what we find and what's going on from there so we'll be back all right guys so let me give you a quick little view into where we are we are just a little bit under 15 minutes in and now our doser is actually starting to dose uh, it went away but this is the pressure. This will start to inject some diesel percentage-wise, and then the temperatures will start to, start to rise. This is our pressure, which is good. Now, after a repair where you actually have to clean out the DOC and do all that stuff, these numbers will jump up, you know, kind of all over the place. They'll start off low, 
at one point right now, I didn't get a chance to record it. It was at 0 0.9 and now it's kind of stabilizing or balancing out at 0 0.5, which is good. I like that. When I tried to do the regen before, it was all over, over the place. It was at one point something and then it went to 1.9 and two. And that was just a clear indicator that there was a DOC face plug situation. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, again, stop recording. Temperatures look good, which is what I like. Uh, and again, we are, yeah, just under 15 minutes into this. So I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys, let's take a look and see how far we are into this. Right now, we are approximately almost 30 minutes into it. Not bad at all. Temperatures are good, 800, 1,984. Pressure, that's the most important thing. So right now, DLC inlet pressure is at 0 0.6. It did jump up to 0 0.8 and then it went right back down to 0, um, 0 0.6, which again, still good. I'm satisfied with that. It's got to burn off whatever ash they weren't able to do at the shop, which is fine with me. Again, a good region will take care of all that. Pressures, temperatures look good. Um, again, I will keep you guys posted. We're about 30 minutes in. I think we still have about another 10 minutes to go, give or take. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, guys, we are approximately 40 minutes in, give or take pressure is still looking good throttle valve is responding fantastic temperatures look at that very very nice so so far so good code has not cleared yet because again this the successful region has not been completed i'm going to show you that right now because obviously we're still doing the regen and i have sub level high again once the region is successful and it is done all this will go inactive and we should be ready to go so keeping you guys posted again 40 minutes in we're roughly probably I'm guessing we're down to our last five minutes depending on what the computer's reading so all is well keep you all posted all right guys we are officially done 40 something minutes into the regen and it looks like everything is successful pressures are awesome temperatures will start to drop let's go over here to verify look at that soot level high where are you at baby soot level high inactive beautiful 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 i'm loving this so we were able to save the one box even though we weren't able to do a five hour regen which is fine with me i am happy with that 100 percent. this saves a customer for having to buy a one box or in some cases having to delete the system now there's no need to delete because hey it's working right we were able to take care of it once this is done and the idle starts to settle down to about 600 or 700 or whatever it's set at, I'm gonna do another idle speed balance test just to see if an injector is acting up or maybe the same injectors are acting up just to see if we get a different result. It doesn't hurt, especially since the truck has been running for a good 45 minutes approximately. So again, it's gonna reset, these numbers will change. Let's see if the results are the same. So I'm gonna take a quick little picture of it, a little before and after all right it'll zero out 90 seconds on the clock all right guys here we go the last few seconds of the idle speed balance test everything passed look at the numbers injector number one 22 so it went from 27 down to 22 this went from 17 or i'm sorry 21 22 down to 17 so not bad i mean these are stereo areas that i want to look at Again, maybe these injectors were might need to get replaced. At that point, you may advise your customer or yourself, depending on what your situation is. Replace all six, that might be a good way to go. But for now, everything is good. Everything is looking fantastic. We are at zone zero. We have no more fault codes. The only thing that we do have on the dash is the ABS, which will go away once we roll the engine above, I think five or 10 miles per hour. So we are all done, guys, as always video helps you guys out i ask for two things a thumbs up and a subscribe please if you can do that that'd be great that's why i do these videos hopefully it will help you guys out hopefully these videos make sense and as always have a great day if you have any questions please don't do not hesitate i do my best to respond thank you